Okay, hi guys. Uh, in this video, we'll try to take up an example to solve convolution sum of an infinite length sequence. Uh, the problem is determine output of a LTI system that is nothing but convolution sum. Uh, this is actually a discrete time LTI system, so convolution sum. Uh, if input x of n is u of n, which is unit step function, and uh, the system impulse response is uh, h of n is equal to u of n minus 2, that is nothing but unit step function shifted right two times by two samples right because it is n minus 2 so it is shifted right two times I have done some initial work so that uh, I can save time in the video uh, let me tell you what did I do here uh, what we do is in as a solution we will we'll, we'll go step by step actually so step 1 in the step 1 what we do we sketch x of n and h of n uh, sorry h of minus n okay uh, sketch x of n and h of minus n and change the independent variable to k. I will let you know why I need to change the independent independent variable to k. Okay. So what is x of n? x of n is u of n, which is a unit step function, right? So unit step function is varying from n zero to infinity, and its amplitude is one. So this is the unit step function as the input sequence x of n. And what is h of n? h of n is what u of n minus two, right? How does a u of n minus 2 looks like? u of n minus 2 is nothing but unit step function shifted right two times. You know, so it starts from n equal to 2. Unit amplitude is 1. Right? So this is how unit step yeah, this is how unit step function is shifted right two times. u of n minus 2. Now what I need is h of minus n. This is what actually h of n, right? h of n is u of n minus 2. But what I need is h of minus n. So what is the mirror image of this h of n, which is h of minus n? So it is minus 1, minus 2. So we just have to flip it like this. So the sequence start from minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, and so on. So amplitude is remains 1. Right? This is 0. So that's that is what I have plotted here. H of minus n mirror image of h of n and h of n is unit step function shifted right two times. Fine. So now I sketched I sketched x of n and h of minus n which are these two and I need to change the independent variable to k. So what that is what I did here. Previously it was x of n. I just changed n to k. That's what I did. Okay. Wherever n is there in this term in this sequence I I, I change it to k here. Okay. Similarly, h of minus n was previous sequence. Now, I when I change it to k, so this is now h of minus k and this is minus k. That is the only difference. Okay. So why did I do this? Uh, the reason I change the independent variable to k is uh, if you have seen my previous video, what is the equation? The equation is what y of n is equal to summation k varying from minus n to infinity. So the independent variable for x of input sequence and impulse response is k right just to match with the equation i have kept the independent variable to i have ch actually changed the independent variable to k so x of k and h of minus k now i have the sequence as per the equation x of k and h of minus k okay now, now step number two is uh, once i bought uh, uh, the independent variable from n to k i need to bring both the sequence together in the same k Right, that's what I did. Right, so I have a k sequence. I mean k axis here. So what I do, I x of k does not move; it remains in that position. Whereas h of minus k will be has a liberty to move. Right, that's what I explained in the previous video. No, so that's what I did here now. Right, so what I did was x of k sequence. So it, it does not move, it remains in that position. It is started from 0 and ends at infinity. So it started from 0 and ends at k is equal to infinity. Okay. So and h of minus k, I just kept it here in that position where minus 2. So minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, so minus 2, minus 3, minus 4 till minus infinity. Fine. Right? So I bought this x of k and h of minus k in a same k axis. And now, mind you, k is the independent variable. Now, once I bring this x of k and h of k minus k together, what I need to do is I need to assign the controlling index to 
the impulse response h of minus k so this is my this sequence is my h of minus k right and i need uh, there will be a controller which controls the movement of this sequence h of minus k and i need to assign an index to this controller and this index depends upon where is my uh, end of the sequence right now if this sample was if suppose this sample is was at zero then my n was uh, the control index was just n okay if this sample was at minus 1 then my controlling index was n minus 1 okay now since it is in minus 2 now controlling index is n minus 2 if this is if this end of this sequence is at somewhere at minus 10 then my controlling index will be n minus 10 and if this is at plus 12 then my controlling index will be n plus 12 so the the idea here is just add one term n to the end of the uh, sequence h of minus k right so don't worry i'll take up some more problems so that you'll get used to it how to assign the controlling index okay so basically if you have minus 2 just add one term n to that so n minus 2 fine now once you assign the controlling index now you have the liberty to move this slide slider anywhere you want okay so you can keep this n minus 2 slider at minus 5 you can keep this n minus 2 slider at minus 10 you can keep this n minus 2 slider to minus infinity so, so once you assign the controlling index you have the liberty you can move this n minus 2 slider from n minus infinity to plus infinity okay so now step number three i need to start moving my h of minus k sequence this sequence from minus infinity to plus infinity okay to decide where are the overlapping region of my both h of minus k and x of k so that so that what so that i can take up the sum of product for overlapped portion the way i explained you in the previous uh, video just digest this uh, we will continue to solve this problem in the next video